What's up, dude? Wyatt, so glad to have you back, man. Third time. Thanks for having me back. Thank you Appreciate for letting it. me letting me in into your your space here. It's dude, a, of course, it's our space. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna I'm I'm moving. I think I'm gonna take this couch here. <laughs> go for it. <laughs> um, yeah, couch couch is always the way to go if you're staying with somebody. You know. Yeah, I almost feel like I sleep better sometimes on a couch. Really? Yeah, it's like the being all tight. Right, like a little cat curled yeah. up. There's been some some uncomfortable couches though, and that that's rare to find, but they are out there. True. I would say this one's not wouldn't be a great one to sleep on. I I don't know. I mean, it's a little squeak like the leather is just makes you know, every every time it just squeaks, you know. Yeah. Or like if if you're if you're shirtless on a leather couch. Exactly. That's, yeah. Whew, no bueno. It's bad news. <laughs> um. Yeah. Wyatt. Three three times now. There's there's been a that's couple awesome. of three Peters. You're the third three Peter. Wow! So that's that's some mythology shit right there. Three, three, three. Yeah. Damn. Are you are you, are you into that kind of stuff? Um. Uh, oh, look who's here. I think I, I think we got it on the on the mic. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know if I'm really that into mythology. I don't. I think there's. It's interesting, but. Are you allergic to cats? No, I I got two cats. Nice. Um. No, when I usually do this at home. I gotta kick my cat out of my room because I'm worried that he'll he'll brush up against the chair that I sit on. It's got like a little like lever thing. Got it. You know that'll raise it and lower it. Yeah. And it'll <laughs> it'll of. pick up on the mic, <laughs> and I I hate it when that happens. I yeah. I gotta like brush him away. That's funny. This guy's the coolest cat I've ever met. Yeah, he's just chilling. Yeah. Social. He's the best. He likes to hang out on my lap. Did you did you have a uh, Cats growing up or dogs? No cats, dogs. dogs. Uh, I was a big dog guy. I didn't have a cat till I met my girlfriend, and it was weird. I wasn't used to the whole how cats behave and how you interact with them. Right. But now I've, I'm more, probably more of a cat guy. Yeah, you you so. you've changed. Damn, he likes you. Yeah. For those, who that's are, the rite of passage. He doesn't he doesn't pick he doesn't sit on everyone's laps. He only sits on laps of people that he likes. And he he is on my lap currently. Yeah. Um. I heard this about cats that you, if you want them to like come to you, like you can't be like super aggressive, like oh hey, you know, like paid attention. You just gotta like let it, l- let it do its thing. It'll come up to you if you yeah. if, if you it wants you. Yeah, we are their pet. Yeah. Do you feel like you're introverted or extroverted? Hundred percent introverted. <laughs> it's I a pleasure to have those, you on the podcast again. I've, <laughs> I've taken those like personality tests, you know, and it's always just like. You fucking hate people. You, you know, I'm like, yeah, seems, sounds about right. No, I don't hate people, but not a talkative type. Right. If it's one on one, I, I'm better with one on one, but uh, group social settings are not my forte mm. at all. Was that was that difficult when you started performing live? Like to have that mindset? Surprisingly, or? not. I've never really felt nervous performing or anything. I feel there's a big disconnect. Kind of, I don't know. Cause I'm not, I'm not having to socialize while performing. I'm basically just repeating something that I've already created. Right. You know? Yeah. That's like if I wrote a script of what I was going to respond with you, this whole conversation, you know what I mean? It's less nerve wracking because you're like, okay, I know this song goes into this song. Okay. I know what I'm going to do. It's like structured. Yeah. It's structured. Yeah. But if you, if you know, you throw me into a room of like a hundred people and, I'll probably just be in the corner, you know, scrolling on TikTok or like trying to find the nearest cat to pet, <laughs> you know. Yeah. No, as 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 everybody does. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you remember the first time you performed live? <clears throat> Not off the top of my head. It would be probably, you know, my teens. Yeah, you're, you're 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 teen pop star, and everybody knows that. Yeah, uh, man, I wish I was a teen pop star, but I, I was probably high school era, somewhere in there, in front of friends, parties. Yeah, fuck yeah. Like, well, you know, backyard house parties, garage. There's this kid who used to throw shows in his garage. That's that that's that's the guy that you need to, to be friends with. Like, yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. It was fun. Super fun. It was just a normal two car garage that was just had nothing in it, and uh, it, was, it was fun. How many times do you see garages but nothing in it besides the car? Like, 
rarely very rarely yeah, yeah. that's why i was like what what do you do with the, like how do your parents just not use this at all it was just completely empty yeah did your so. did your parents used to park in your garage as, as a kid uh yes at one point they were and then at one point they weren't and the garage became very much a storage place facility a public and then storage at, at one point my dad let me have this corner of the garage to set up a desk and that's where i started recording and you're, yeah, you're doing work out there in, in the hot garage yeah exactly exactly <laughs> Um, and and you started with with drums, or you were really into drums as a, yeah, as yeah. a kid. Mm-hmm. Were you were you playing drums at home too? Yeah, I mean my my dad was a drummer, and so there was always drum sets around. Mm-hmm. Um, but he would never let me play them. It was like this whole thing, which just made me want to play them even more. Sure, rebel kid, so rebel pop star kid. I eventually, mean, we've heard it much times now. <laughs> exactly. Uh, it was all this time. It actually, was, it really was me just being like, "Fuck you, dad! I want to play drums so fucking bad, especially that you won't let me touch these." And so eventually he taught me how to play because I would not stop bugging him. And where where were these uh, drum sets located? Uh, there was a lot of them in the garage that were just stacked up, you know. By the not... desk, sure. <laughs> there was one inside that was just stacked up. Wow. None of them were set up. They were just there. Just bang, bang, bang. Yeah. Right. Um, it was probably, yeah, like three or four drum sets that were just stacked and uh, just bothered me. <laughs> I want to I wanna hit those. I can't hit on those. And then so fi- finally, you were able to. Yeah, I think I was 12 or 13 when he let me. Wow. Now, did yeah. you, in, in your earliest project, like, you know, playing in, at these house shows and whatnot and garage shows, were you playing drums or were you on? Yeah, usually okay. drums. I kind of started to kind of mess with guitar a little bit in high school. And there was a uh, one project that I was in where I was playing guitar. And that was Molly Crew. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> In the early, early years of Motley yeah, Crue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha. Before they even were called Motley Crue. Wow. Yeah, do you do you remember the name of the of the band before they were called uh, Motley Crue? Motley Screwed. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just a little bit of a tweak there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh do you think that your that your father had an had an impact on the way that you uh made music, especially in per- the realm of percussion? <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, I wouldn't be I wouldn't have even gone into music. I don't think at all without him. Yeah, I mean, I, I give it all up to to my dad for that for sure. Yeah, I, everything I learned, all the fundamental, even just listening to music, the way to listen to music, and even even you know mixing and and producing and stuff. I've taken a lot of what he's taught me with drums and have instilled that upon production work does it does it always stem from from drums for you is it always like that's that's the root of the the i mean it is the backbone of course but is it the root of where you're coming from for for music uh it used to be and it's depending on the type of music if there's drums or a percussive element in a song typically that's to me a good place to start but there's some stuff that doesn't doesn't need any drums or percussion and maybe it's more vocal centric and it's about the lyrics and the vocal coming across and so that's a whole different approach selfishly i like stuff with drums in it and percussion in it i'm drawn to that sort of thing right um but depends on the type of music you know sure if if your father wasn't musically inclined do you think that you would have the same relationship with music that you do now? No. No, definitely not. Probably would have had some sort of relationship with music, but maybe not because I've, that's like, you know. There's nothing to knows. rebel against. Sure. Yeah, I mean, maybe, I, I don't know. I would. I feel like most people enjoy music. You, you know, I, it's hard to, I've never met someone that's like, I don't like music, you know? So I probably would have been attracted to it at some level, but. I don't know if I would have, yeah, I don't know. I don't know to the extent of that. Let's find out. We're going to, we'll, 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 we'll <laughs> come back to that. Um, so in the, in these earlier projects, what kind of music were you, were you making in, in the, in the earliest formation of, of these bands that you were in? Uh, the f- first project I was in was very much, 
I was really into Arctic Monkeys. That shit blew my mind when I heard that that uh, first record come out. That and The Strokes. Um, and so it was very much inspired by Arctic Monkeys and The Strokes. There was a band I was in that was doing ja- traditional jazz songs because I was so deep into drumming. And jazz, that, that was the scholastic end of it where jazz band and going to college and so I was very much into jazz music for a minute um and then there was a like pop punk band that I was in where we just wanted to sound like Blink-182 essentially I mean who doesn't really yeah at the end of the especially day especially in the early two th- I mean that shit was so even now it's like this yeah. is dude ranch you're trying to do yeah. dude ranch for yeah. everybody yeah so I mean that was basically what was inspiring to me the, the strokes really were a big one for me big one when i heard that they, they've had a massive imprint on a lot of people yeah that i, that I talked to yeah at least yeah, as yeah. Well. yeah. It, and people I, I i keep i've said this a few times and i still think it's true but i think the strokes are like the beatles of our generation i i would i would say so that the, the way they you know wound up revolutionizing a lot of people's views of music yeah and, and it's inspiring them just genius totally genius especially at that time there was just nothing there was nothing like that it was so unique it's one of you know you just you know it right when you went when the stroke song comes on you know it's them right you know? right so there's something special about that is is there another band contemporary band that it's like the beatles in that way that they're you know they they, they shift no i talk about this all the time with people you know what what's that next uh wave or yeah i don't know the st- I, the strokes always come to mind jack white and and the white stripes and all of that always come to mind cuz that was pretty revolutionary um you know some people would say greta van fleet which you know i think they're great but i don't think they're revolutionizing they're kind of more like rehashing something that's been done before but they're doing it so well there's a band called the Lemon Twigs, I think. Mm-hmm. They're onto something. I think they're really onto something. Yeah. Um, there's a band called Nightfire that I think is really Night onto something. Fire. Yeah, I think they're really onto something. And and Beach Bums, I think they're onto something. I think they're f- infusing, you know, like rap and hardcore and indie rock. Right, right. So I think there's stuff percolating, but I don't think it's gone to the level that the Strokes or like Jack White have taken it to. Mm-hmm. I think it's still super underground. And uh yeah, that that band uh, Beach Bums, uh they're they're signed to a label. I can't remember the name of it. What uh, Yeah, and I was bad self promotion. You know? But I do believe I really believe that they're they're on the cutting edge. No no no, that's that that's good. Are you are you kinda of looking for that sound when you're when you're um when you're signing or like looking for people or people approach you like, Hey, we wanna release through you guys? Th- Is, I'm, I, there's, that's one of that's one of the reasons. But and the next reason is things. like what kind of music, what kind of instruments they're using, like uh, like Gibsons and stuff. Like that's really important. <laughs> that's crucial. Oh God, that would be horrible. That would be freaking horrible. Sorry, not Gibson Fender. Whatever, whatever <laughs> you're. <laughs> the the principle of that would just be so horrible. Um, no, it's uh, it could be anything. It could be that like completely mind blowing fucking shit you've never heard of before and. Also, could be something that's just sounds classic, that sounds amazing. Like, wow, this is so good. Just, just totally depends. Do you do you recall the first uh, release from Lollipop? Like the first people that you that you signed? Yeah, I mean, technically, it was Mr. Elevator and the Brain Hotel was the first. I've heard of those guys. Lollipop release, yeah. L Pop O One, uh, which I don't think that album is on Spotify. Well, I mean it. Uh, it is, but it was re-recorded. Mm-hmm. The the original recordings, which were just done in GarageBand, and then we just put it out as Lollipop. Um, the first band that I worked with that wasn't my band was um, a band called Your Ugly Sister. They were a Laguna Beach band. That sounds like a Laguna Beach name. Yeah, they were yeah. Aw- they were awesome. They were so good. Um, yeah. They were fucking awesome. Is is that who you were kind of like playing with uh, in that scene uh, uh, when you were yeah. still in Orange County? Yeah, yeah, it's very much in in that similar similar thing. They were younger, <clears throat> younger kids, and uh, 
they were just really fucking cool. It's one of those things where uh, that band in particular sparks my interest in trying to maybe use Lollipop as an actual record label, not just a pseudo name for the band I was in, you know? Sure. Uh, that that release, the, the first record of Mr. Elevator, what, that was still released when you were living down south? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I was just out of high school. I want to say I was 18 or 19. Pretty old, pretty 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 withered within the <laughs> within the, the music. That <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was uh what a different time, man. It's crazy to think about, but um yeah, but th- this this album it was uh, the band was me, Thomas, and this guy named Justin. That was the original formation of the band. Three piece three piece yeah it was uh thomas on keys singing i was playing bass and singing and then justin was playing drums and singing and yeah i mean our first show was a halloween party and so classic and so uh what a way to break in yeah it was it was great and i remember uh i'm trying to remember if it was justin or thomas was where's waldo this is really funny, dude. Seeing a guy like you know Waldo like playing in a band. Yeah, I forget. I think it was Thomas actually that was Where's Waldo? But maybe, um, maybe it's like hiding in plain sight though. Maybe that was his his logic on that. Yeah, maybe. Where it's like nobody nobody ever thinks about finding Waldo exactly where people are looking. Yeah, true, true. He's never there. You're right. Yeah, it was a uh, it was funny, and I remember that that kind of inspired us to make Halloweeny sounding stuff because we didn't really have much of a set. We're just like. Let's just sound Halloween ish, you know? <laughs> so, um, good inspiration. Yeah. And it, th- that record basically was just re recorded two years later when we moved to LA and we put it out. And that's the first record that's on Spotify. But there are recordings of all of those songs. I mean, there's tapes out there that exist um, with that. So, <clears throat> and that was also released with Rad Cat, right? I, I, I think yeah, we, yeah. I think we talked about this mm-hmm. before. Yeah, but yeah. we're just we're just going over it again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's time. Yeah. Hey, it's been like over a year. Why? Yeah, last true, game true. On. We used to joke around and say that our sound was a psychedelic bar mitzvah. I like that. Like if you took acid and went to a bar mitzvah, <laughs> that was our sound. <laughs> That's we coined that. We talked about that for a while. Like, does this fit? Does would this work as a psychedelic bar mitzvah? <laughs> but. Going from, I mean, Mr. Elevator and what you're doing there with the psychedelic bar mitzvah sound, uh, to to where you are now with the latest release, Ricky's Last Dance. Right, that was that's the latest one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do, do you feel like your your sound? I mean, the the, the sound has changed uh, uh, from from there to to what you're doing now. But uh, do do you feel like you're approaching music differently since then to now? Yeah, totally. I mean, w- with uh, the Mr. Elevator project, it wasn't just <clears throat> my creative input. It was very much like a unit. You know, it was it was the three of us had a lot to do with how that sounded, and then we wrote songs kind of specifically in that genre. You know, in that type of sound. Um, with my own music, I've n- I've just never wanted to pigeonhole myself as one particular type of music. And so I've even back then when I was, when we were doing the band full time and all that, I was still making music on my own. That was just whatever I wanted it to be, whether it was, you know, be like pop stuff or reggae stuff or your fixation on jazz. Yeah. I mean, I I haven't written, I have not written a jazz song, but I just like experimenting and kind of uh, using the creative gym I just feel like the studio for me selfishly is like a creative gym. It's like how, Oh, I'm kind of weak in this one area. Let me, let me go into some reggae shit. See if I can like get my chops up, you know, and listen to a bunch of reggae records and just dive into a whole thing for a year or two and make, get inspired to make something. Right. Then I'll move and then I'll try something else. It's, I don't know. Reggae is so good. Yeah, like the, the those old Trojan records and recordings. Yeah. Whoosh. Um, that's I, a world that's it's yeah I feel like you have to really live and breathe reggae music to make it right right I've tried my share of that I have a couple reggae songs but I'm not like fully engulfed in that shit mm-hmm. you know what I mean yeah 
and yeah i mean you could really submerge yourself within it uh especially like those old, those old like recordings like uh oh what was that one guy like carl dawkins and stuff mm. like that or um that one guy i'm forgetting his name i i think i know you're talking about the dub guy yeah 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 i'm forgetting his name it's on my head but uh we'll come back to it that shit is so it's so cool but you can't uh yeah that that shit is like learning a different language completely different language with you creating lollipop has that kind of lended itself to that freedom to do explore sound in whichever way you want to uh i would say no actually um Con- i think that's a controversial I think, answer right there Why? i think I, just uh, want to tell you. I think the whole the the whole purpose of lollipop really was to do just exactly that um Hence, you know, all the different flavors and shapes and sizes of lollipops. That was like a big driving factor into creating the business was like, let's not pigeonhole ourselves as being a quote unquote rock label or this type of label. We just put out really great music, whatever the fuck it is, Mm -hmm. you know. Um, So I think as the years have gone, I've been trying to lean more into that. Um, but it's always been at the the center of the whole ethos of the company. I was gonna say ethos. I'm, I, I'm glad. I'm glad I don't know why my brain pathos ethos. and logos. Yeah, there you go. we're there in you it. Go. <laughs> uh, now, I mean, this started 2010, 2011. Uh, I would say unofficially 2011, 2012. And officially, we opened our f- record store and like really launched Lollipop in 2013. Now, over the course of 10, 10, year, 10, 10 or 11 years now, yeah, yeah. Uh, how many releases do you think you guys have done just ballpark in a number? Uh, I, I know phys- physical actual pressings of releases have, are about th- between three and 400. Um, but if you include all the physical with with stuff that we've done just digitally i, I would probably say close to six or seven hundred we're gonna check the books on that we're gonna we're gonna nah, don't quote me in. on that <laughs> <laughs> it's exactly it's a uh, 602 yeah <laughs> does it does it surprise you the um the evolution of the of the label N- looking back on it from where it began to where you are now yeah fuck yeah it's been a in an insane journey life-changing psychedelic absolutely it made me cry has made me over filled with joy has made me very angry has made me extremely happy it's been uh an insane ride for sure and the evolution from my point of view it's i know it's kind of hard because i'm i don't i can't really see it from the outside i just i'm so you're in the forest engulfed yeah uh it seems like you know people don't talk about this a lot, but when you're doing something for so long, this is one of the only things I've done for like, you know, I'm, I'm only 30, I'm 31. And so a third of my life has been this company. Um, there's nothing else in my life that I've done for that long. So it's, it's weird that you would think the evolution would be one straight line slowly going upward Mm-hmm. You know, because you're making progress every day. You keep doing it. Uh, but it's very much a squiggly, squiggly line. There's times where there's progress is made and there's times where you're taking a whole step back. Um, so that's been interesting to navigate. It's been, uh, there's, you know, sometimes the river is calm. Sometimes it's very turbulent. It's not always upward every day. You right. Know, it's, it's, a, it's been a w- very weird ride. And w- I mean, would it be... As fun as it is and as rewarding as it is, if there wasn't some. No, yeah. no, no. And yeah, I have to remind myself that for sure. That's why I'm here. <clears throat> this is, that's like really why I'm here. For sure. Why, yeah. But it, there's that extra, it's like the knife goes in extra deep when <laughs> you're 10 years in and something happens that sets you back a year's worth of work, you know? And it's just like, oh. So, but yeah, you're right. Uh, but when you're in it, it's hard to, to see that right. light at the end of the tunnel. Right. Uh, has there has there been uh you know recording something that has actually just lo- been lost and it's like fuck we can't get that back like, yeah like, like an actual yeah fuck we're actually stepping back here yeah Oof. yeah 
that's, that's yeah, there's been, there's, blow. there's been a few. Yeah, there's been a few times of that. Yeah, it's just, it's just, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's discuss that. That's wife. the worst. Yeah, it's the worst. I mean, there's probably, uh, dude, there's a lot. I've recorded the, some of the very first LA Witch recordings, and we we did it to tape, and at the time, you know, tape costs a decent amount of money just to buy a reel is, you know, a hundred bucks, which for struggling artists, that's a lot of money, it's, you know, yeah. that's, it's it, going to hurt the pocket and, and only hurt. It only lasts, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes worth of music. Oh, one, one, one reel. One reel. 20, yeah. And so minutes. at the time, everyone, you know, that I knew we were all very young, we're strapped for cash and lollipop. We had maybe three or four reels that were regurgitated between, the bands we were recording because you could basically when a band's done recording you can just wipe over with silence over the tape and then reuse it oh okay and so that's what we would do um it's still 400 bucks why Shit. yeah but I mean, this is <laughs> this is maybe in the course of three or four years we've we accumulated those tapes you know right and uh so i did a couple songs with la witch that and they were so fucking cool the songs were so cool the recording was awesome um i remember being really stoked on it and i didn't put the tape <clears throat> in the correct shelf and someone recorded over it yeah yeah and it was uh that was some great stuff some really great stuff yeah i still think about that like damn um how did, how did you how did you, how did you break the news to him like hey we got a yeah problem. i just I was like, the tape got recorded over. Like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry. You know, it's like, you know, the the right and see, like, that's how I, how I would have done things differently. I just didn't know what I was doing back then, you know. I would have taken that tape home with me is what I would have done, or I would have put it... Um, Somewhere secure or something. Yeah, like I would have, like, put it in my personal bag, or I would have held on to it personally. It's what I do now. Um like with hard drives and things, I just, I just have them with me. I just know where they are all the time. So, and there's been, yeah, there's other things too. You know, there's, there's some Mr. Elevator songs that got recorded over. Um, I made a whole record that was on a laptop that got stolen. Um, like, like how, 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 how far along were you in that? So that record actually was a one that I put out called Point of Return. Mm, okay. And all those songs on that record aren't mixed. Um, they were just the bounces that I made um, before my computer got stolen. And so when I, my computer got stolen, um, I, I was completely done with the record. I just needed, I was just in the mixing phase. And I was so disappointed. And because uh, yeah, I, I bounced them, you know, like before I mixed them, mm -hmm. there's, there's. But you, you you saw those those raw. I had those wave raw bounces. And I was that like, wave, yeah, that's that's the best. And I was kind just of like, fucking, I guess that's the album, you know. Yeah. So it still bothers me when I listen to that album because I'm like, I could have, you know, actually mixed it. I could have actually teased, you know. They're, they're, I just would have, especially now, I've uh, you know, was it seven years after? I'm like, God, I hate those recordings. I hate the way they sound, but it is what it is, you know. It's either that or the record. I have to re-record the whole thing, which I've thought about doing actually. But yeah, and that's gonna you're working on that right now, right? <laughs> no, not right now. Sorry, uh, jazz album. Jazz first. album first, yeah. And then, I mean, you got it. You got to have like a linear line. Yeah, exactly. Calendar. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> when you were a kid, listening to music, what was like your preferred format of like ingesting music? Or when Dude, you, when you know you what's funny is, uh, cause I, you know, I'm a pretty typical millennial, you could say, and I went through this. I was young when all of the changes started happening, and I remember as a kid, I loved cassette tape. I loved the cassette Walkman. I liked the cassette karaoke player thing because I could record two tracks onto it, I can, mm -hmm. like basically record myself playing. And then make copies of it. I mean, you got to do it at the desk. That's, I mean, yeah. that's what the desk is there for. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I would say really young me would say cassette. But then when I got into like, you know, older teenage years, definitely CD. Everything was CD. 
um, for a long time. And I loved CDs. I had the big thing in my dash with all the CD holders. I had the big pullouts. Right, the, 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 yeah, like the filing thing. Yeah, and I would have my favorite five albums at the time Mm -hmm. up there, so I could just flip, flip them in the car. What was I, that? What were some albums that were like? Yeah, uh, for, for the Strokes. CDs. Their the Strokes' first album was always popping mm-hmm. in my car. Li- um, lived in there. Yeah, there's the Third Eye Blind record I loved with the with the one that the the, the red one. Yeah, with the lady yeah, covering yeah. the face. Yeah. God, that record. I wore that record out. Um, Arctic Monkeys' first record wore that to the freaking bone. I'm trying to think what else. Oh, uh, um. Kings of Leon's uh, first two records. I was obsessed with those in high school. So, shit, man, there's a lot. I got way into indie rock music in, in high school. Um, there's a band called The Kooks that I really liked. Devendra Banhart, I really liked his albums. Um, I mean, the list goes on. Ty Siegel, even, he was doing a lot of oh, cool yeah. shit. There's a really cool band called Charlie and the Moonhearts. Yeah, Charles or, Charles Moonhearts. Yeah, yeah, and like they, I remember they came out with a seven inch that I wore out. I remember it was the first vinyl I really bought. Oh wow! I didn't have a record player. So not in not in your ha- guy. your house either. No, so I I bought one at a thrift store just so I could listen to that Charlie and the Moonhearts seven inch. Wow, uh, yeah. was was he also a Orange County? Guy? I don't I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah, they're all okay. Laguna Beach guys. Yeah, there's just so much inspiring uh, stuff. But uh, see, I would say CD, I guess. CD? Long answer for that question, but no, probably but CD, probably. All right. Uh, in in terms of uh of tapes, was it more of like a mixtape? Like, w- you would you make one or would it just be like one? Yeah, I mean, the, the cool thing with tapes is that there were still like record stores when I was a kid that were not in like small independent ones, like large companies, like Warehouse Records, Tower, and, and Tower, shit. and all that. And you could go in and not only buy new stuff, but there's tons of used stuff. And I remember specifically the tape section being the cheapest and the most, basically the only way I could get my dad to buy me something because, you know, it was like five bucks for a, an album. Yeah. The, so kind of the way it is now. Dude still. Ranch on cassette was like five bucks or, you know, the third eye blind record on cassette, five bucks. My dad's like, all right, I'll buy you the tape, you know? Things That's like that. five dollars, whatever. Yeah, so you know, CDs were more expensive. They were like the premier format of the time. So I ended up with more of just used cassette stuff that I got to listen to as a kid because they're cheap. You know, mm-hmm. um, CDs were like, oh shit, you're gonna buy the CD? Like, you must like that band. La di da, dude. Yeah, yeah. Look, you, Mister Money. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but as I got older, you know, when I like worked in high school and stuff, I would like buy cds you know that i knew like you know i'm gonna buy the stroke cd um do you, but do you, then it all changed from there yeah do you still have that charles moonheart uh vinyl dude you know what's funny i was looking for that a couple months ago and i can't find it it's a bummer and i i they signed it because i went to their show i was a high school kid and they played at this like show and they were selling seven inches and i remember they signed it and i was like this is sick like, i need to get a record player so cool, but now I can't find it. How many how many records do you have in your your personal collection? Ooh, I don't know. Rough estimate. I don't know. I wouldn't even. I would say if if I laid down on the floor, I'm like almost six feet. You you could probably stack horizontally or vertically. Sorry, all of my record collections in, in about six feet. Wow. But that, that I wouldn't say that's a lot for like a record. No, nerd. it's not. It's not, but still. Yeah, I don't know how much that would be. All right, so well, next so next time that we do this, we're going to we're going to film I'll it. We'll have to count it, yeah. We're going to film it. We're going <laughs> we're, we're to go through each. Yeah, I'll have to hand count. What's in Wyatt's collection? That's what we're going to call it. I think that's pretty there you go. It's pretty it's pretty new. I don't think anybody's ever done that like going through something that, you know, <laughs> there you go, records that people have bought. I don't I think it's new concept. Kind of, yeah. I mean, there's that amoeba what's in your bag thing. No, no, I don't. This is I, different. I, I never yeah. heard about that. Anyways, <laughs> yeah, we we got to get that out. I'm going to trademark it. It'll be fine. Yeah. I I would actually watch that. Like <laughs> yeah. people's record collections. Right. I, that'd be interesting. Yeah, it's it's always it's always neat when you when you do see somebody that has or what, I mean whatever CDs or something yeah. like that yeah, too. Yeah. Yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, I like that one, too, or I haven't heard about that one, or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. 
I God, think what a hor- crazy way to s- spend so much money on records. <laughs> I don't even have that big of a collection, you know what I mean? Right. It's like, man, some people I know that have just rooms full of, I'm like, wow. Right. It's crazy. It's wild. Um, is there, is your a favorite vinyl that you own? Like a, this, um, or, or one that you like, this is the one I fucking play the most. Damn, I, that's a good question. Um, There's a record actually that I do play. I always catch myself playing it on my record player. And same with my girlfriend, which is funny. She always ends up playing it. This is a band called The Toms, and it was their first record. Um, it just sounds so good, especially on on vinyl. Something about it sounds really good. It's easy to listen to. The recordings are really interesting, mm-hmm. and the songs are just really good. Yeah. Really good songs. I'd, I'd say probably that record. Yeah. All right. That checks out. Do you have records? I, I got, yeah, I got a few records. Nice. Yeah. Um, yeah I, I feel like you're the kind of guy that's like, I got a few records, and I, I go over to your place, and it's just thousands and thousands of records. <laughs> no, Holy I... shit. It's... Uh, I do... I, I get records I really, really enjoy. Yeah. Um, or somebody gives me a record that's very special. I got a... Recently-ish... I got uh, somebody gave me a record of Miles Davis, my old Flame, mm. uh, really good album. And uh, but I actually have been or- uh, ordering some some new records recently. Nice. Which where do is, you where do you order? I, like I online. Use, yeah, well, I mean, uh, there's this great uh, record store slash um, you know distributor and and label uh, Lollipop. I don't know if you. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I do own some Lollipop um, records, but. Uh, of course, I mean that's staple, <laughs> staple of it. Uh, I like to buy people's albums. I've been on the podcast. Um, little story that that you're a part of at the Continental Room mm. a few maybe like a year ago or so. Jared Matson was uh, yeah playing. I remember that yeah, and he he's been on the podcast and uh, he makes great music yeah. with Matson too and his solo stuff. And I was yeah. like, oh, I gotta buy that record. He um because he played a song that night. It's called "Burn Down Babylon," mm. and I was like, oh, I and I remember hearing it and I was like, oh, what what the fuck? Like that song is so great. I yeah. was like, Oh, the, the album's finally coming out. So I just ordered that the other the other night, and that was nice. through <sighs> Car Park Records. Yeah, I yeah, think yeah. Is what it's called? Cool. Yeah. So Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, so wh- wh- whatever. Not the, a lot of people do that, man. Yeah. That's that's a very cool thing. I try. I try to. Yeah, and I. That's amazing. I. I and it goes. That shit goes a long way. Yeah. I, I purposely. I'm like do that all the fucking time. Mm-hmm. Purposely, I love doing that shit. Yeah. There's and nothing like getting a package from like a small company in the mail and repping that shit. Yeah. I I love doing that. Also, uh, Coal Mine Records, mm. uh, they're putting out great, great stuff. Nice. That's uh, Aaron Frazier and Duran Jones and Indications. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Coal Mine. Coal records. Mine. Coal Mine Records. Check yeah. That out. Uh, out of Bloomington, Indiana, I think. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Cool, cool stuff in this guy. Okonski. It's like a jazz. Nice. Three piece. Okay. Really, really sick stuff. So yeah, that's that's where I find if if somebody's like promoting, it's like oh yeah, I gotta I gotta check that out. Yeah. yeah very cool. I'll definitely check that out. Gotta keep your ear to the to the scene you know what it's just fun i just like I'm interested in people doing cool shit yeah i love i love seeing that even if it's not because I'm, I'm really wrapped in the in the music world right now but if if i'm talking to somebody else um about whatever they're into like that's sick like oh like tell me what's what's going on with this you know yeah the shoe world or whatever yeah, yeah. it is what's going on with them shoes huh yeah i asked my buddy ralphie uh he designs shoes and and I'll, I'll ask or he'll show me like what he's working on. It's sick. I love getting to other people's what, yeah. like whatever they're in. Same, dude. It's fun. Yeah. I would actually say that the less you know too about something you're talking about makes it more interesting, you know? Right. It's just like this whole, what? You do that? How do you do that? Yeah. Um. Yeah, for sure. It's I yeah. It's, it's good to come into things like just blindly like, oh, what's, what's, what's with this? Or like yeah. visiting somewhere, you know, it's like, what do you yeah. do? What's, yeah, yeah. Where's the hangout spot? You know? Yeah, exactly. That's always that's always fun. Yeah, that's to, the whole fun part of going somewhere new, actually. Really. Yeah. What yeah. was it, wh- where'd you used to hang out as a as a youth? Why? As a youth, um, a youth. There was an El Pollo Loco. That uh, that was a spot. 
That's so Orange County of me, but there was, <laughs> very there was an El Pollo Loco uh, and a Del Taco. That those were kind of the spots, and then there was this twenty four hour diner. Dang, it's still tw- there. Twenty four hour diner. I mean, yeah, twenty four seven diner. That's big in news. Dana Point. Okay, what's what's the name of it? It's called Harbor House. Okay, Harbor House Cafe. Yeah, with the little circle yes, thing. Exactly. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm, there's I'm one, from County. <laughs> yeah. So there's there's one in there, and I think there's one in Huntington Beach. Mm-hmm. So uh, p- most people would hang out there because it was just always open and it was cheap. Um, but then when I would get really baked with my friends, we would smoke in the El Pollo Loco parking lot and then get dipped cones and just like giggle in the fucking parking lot eating our dipped cones. <laughs> that was like our thing. And we would always, uh, this we had this ritual that was really fu- really funny, but we would get really baked in my friend's car. He was an older friend. He's the only one that had a car. And then we would go Crucial. into... We would, yeah, we would go into El, El Pollo Loco back when they... I think they still do Foster's Freeze. And we El would... El Pollo Loco doing Foster's Freeze? They did Foster's Freeze That's for like crazy. when I was in high school. It was really good ice cream. Mm-hmm. And they would do like the dip and chocolate cone and that whole thing. And uh, they would always ask for a name, you know, for the order. And we would always try and make up the most ridiculous name. And like, see who could make up the most ridiculous name when we were just baked. You know, <laughs> everyone in that El Pollo logo is just like, oh god, these kids. And the winner was my friend Cameron, who said hammer, and it was the hardest I've ever laughed in my life. All of us, we died laughing, and no one could understand. Even now, I'm like, that's not that funny. But at the no, time, it's pretty funny. yeah, being baked with your friends and you're getting a cone. And like, okay, and what what's the or- name for the order? Hammer. Fucking dead, dead. The whole Apoya Loco was just lit up. Yeah. So I guess that's it. Del Taco, you know, it was like that was more like a drive-through hangout spot. Sure, sure. Hang out, hang out. Do like drive-through. Mm-hmm. Chain smoke cigarettes in the parking lot, and you know, like, life sucks, bro. Like just eat, you know. Harbor House was like the late night spot. Kind of more mild cigarettes. Yeah. Smoking. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> when did you start smoking cigarettes? Uh, uh probably. End of high school. Like, I really was a smoker, like, yeah, end of high school into, like, my mid-20s. Then I stopped. What was your your cigarette of choice? Marlboro Light. Yeah. Love Marlboro Lights. Still? Yeah, still. I mean, occasionally, I've been working with this guy here who uh, I really look up to and I'll smoke with him and stuff and he smokes Marlboro lights and it's just like oh the smell of it just the scent of it something about it I don't know why a Marlboro man I think so So I don't smoke anymore but I did for a long time I miss it do you uh, do you we were talking about this before the the coffee situation you're on you're off yeah it's, yeah, it's a, I was on it for so long never even thought of ever removing coffee until I dealt with some anxiety shit that I, you know, just my life hit a wall. And I was like, hmm, maybe I should stop drinking coffee and see if that does anything. And so I I did not do coffee for a long time. And then I did tea for a little bit. Did it, did it help though? Did it, did the the coffee consumption or the decrease of it help? Um, yes and no, I guess is the right answer. I'm, so you just blame it all on coffee. I think I think it's uh, what I've come to realize is it was the residual amount of coffee. If I you know, if I didn't have a limit to the coffee I consumed, it would probably result in some jittery, weird, acidic, anxiety stuff. But now I just do one shot of espresso in the morning, and I that's all I give myself. And it's, and it's good that'll they'll repel yeah, you. Yeah, it's fine. And like, if I do that, I've you know I've been doing that now for a minute. I'm back on coffee now, but I just do a shot. I make an americano every morning, and I'm fine. Iced or hot? Hot, always hot. Never right. iced. Not an iced coffee guy. Now, I don't know why. The cookie consumption of you. Yeah, yeah. That was a real issue. <laughs> it's still an issue. I fight it every day. Okay, all right. Yeah. What is it about the cookies, Wyatt? Uh. Everything, I don't, you know, is everything. The texture, the way it's soft, 
sometimes you get a little crunch on the outside and then it gets soft in the middle. And I don't know if I'm more attracted to the sugar component or like the buttery fat component. Or I, I think it's probably a mixture of it all. Because I don't, you know, someone was telling me, I don't actually, I think I was reading this, that there's no like natural food really that consists of like fat and sugar. You know what I mean? Besides breast milk. And part of me is like, I guess I'd just suck in life's tits. Yeah. Like cookies are a fake tit of life that is sugar and fat. And I love it. And I'm just eating it. And I crave it. And it's like, probably because it's unnatural. It doesn't exist. You know what I mean? It's just like, it doesn't exist. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think there's some, some cookie mythology in there and probably textural components and the sugar and the fat and the texture and the chocolate too. I'm not an oatmeal, oatmeal cookies. Like no way. Mm. No, not going to fly. Well, it's just why you even have it. Yeah. It's just like, I didn't sign up for like a healthy cookie, you know, I'm it's not all or that. nothing at all. I yeah, understand. chocolate chip, white chocolate chip, okay. double chocolate on chocolate. I mean, not with everything, but when you start throwing in like fruit and fucking oats and shit, no, I didn't. That's not why. What yeah. do you, how do you feel about like nuts in, in stuff like that? Like sweets? Uh, so I'm, I'm a super strict with how I eat and stuff. Mm. That's why the cookie thing is extra hard for me because I'll can easily fall off track. I, and I didn't, I didn't want you know, I was, I was struggling. Like, should <laughs> no, I bring no, this no, up? This is good, a real you're problem. Good. <laughs> you're good. Um, I actually don't, I eat any nuts or seeds. That's like a big thing I avoid. I don't, I don't like I don't really like uh, nuts in general, but I certainly don't like it in a sweet, like a yeah, cookie not, or something uh, like that. Yeah, you know, I, I, I like almonds a lot, um, but they're not a food I would want to waste my energy consuming. If that makes sense. No, I'm with you. Yeah, you know, yeah, there's yeah. such like a, I don't know. There's a better food to eat than I, nuts. Like a chocolate fucking chip. There cookie. you go. There you go. Like dark, I would pick dark chocolate over nuts any day. Are you are you down with dark chocolate? A hundred percent. Milk chocolate or dark chocolate overall? Dark chocolate all the way. Okay. Yeah, I can go pretty dark. I can get about ninety percent dark, and then I'm like, I gotta tap out after that. Cacao, ninety um, percent cacao. I could do ninety percent, but like that hundred hmm. percent cacao nib shit just tastes horrible. It just tastes like a gravel. Yeah. You know? um, I need a little bit of sugar with it, you know, a little bit. Yeah, uh, so I ideal meal, cookie and some coffee. Cookie and coffee is good. Yeah, that would be, I'd be ideal in a world where I wasn't uh, trying to be healthy. Yeah. Yeah, cookies, coffee. Yeah. So I mean, too much coffee, you're getting you're getting jittery. Yeah, it's weird, and I don't even think it's the caffeine. I think it's the acidity, maybe mm-hmm. something about too much coffee. It fucks me up. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Do you feel jittery when you when you go on stage to perform? Uh, yeah, but not so much jittery. It's it's like a different type of uh, feeling. It's not really anxiety. It's not jittery. It's like a, a mixture of like excitement and nervousness. Mm-hmm. That makes sense. A little, a little bit anxious, maybe. Yeah, shaky is a more of a way way I would say. Not that, so much that's jittery, like but just kind of shaky. Getting up on stage, like that's that's the way you're feeling. Yeah, kind of shaky, but energized, but confused. Is it a residual feeling throughout the whole set, or does it kind of wear off? Or uh, it usually off? wears off. Yeah, it's usually after this first or second song, it p- typically wears off, and then I'm just kind of in a zone. But even then, it's weird. I can't. It's still hard to talk. It's in the in betweens. Like songs and shit, mm-hmm. that's that. That's still a weird one for me. Do you try to fill that gap, or do you just like do whatever you got to do? I'd rather fill it. I mean, I, I like bands that don't talk too much, that just play their songs, and you know, maybe there's one portion where they, you know, say their thank yous or pay their dues. So I try and do that. I don't want to get too talky, you know. But there's some bands that are great at it. You know, that's like great bands are. It works. I just like barreling through a set, really. Mm-hmm. Do you do you do you feel like super amped after you're done playing, or like what is what is the feeling after no, everything? Opposite, like a wrapped. weight has been lifted off my shoulders. I feel like I just went to hot yoga and 
had a therapy session and then went to jacuzzi you know yeah very zen I feel very zen very like relieved mm-hmm. <laughs> is there a difference between like being the opener and not the middle and then the end oh fuck yeah well it depends on the type of show like the you know um it, it's apparent when you're playing to someone's fans you're almost having to win them over or something or like gain their trust right whereas when i played my residency which was at a very small place maybe 50 people you know a night and but they're there and they're like wanting to hear your music and that's a different feeling totally different feeling um yeah i don't i i don't know i think i like both equally i like the challenge of playing in front of people that, that you need have no idea kind of pushing who you are or like what you're doing yeah right. But then I also like kind of playing to a small crowd that's like really into it, you know, just depends. Right. Yeah. You just want to be challenged. Yeah. I mean, it's challenging either way. Right. Yeah. Different, different capacities. I would say it's easier playing to a small room of people that want either like your music or are there because they want to hear your music or heard about it. That's probably easier. Mm -hmm. But the, the opening for a band that has a large fan base is like, it's kind of challenging, man. That's it's, you know people have got their arms crossed and they're kind of oh. they're yeah I can tell like, what is this guy what's this guy's deal you know yeah I I try to never cross my arms ever <laughs> you know what I'm saying because I always feel like it's like I'm not judging you you know yeah. it's just, I'm I'm just here and that is yeah. comfortable like, yeah to, I mean I like the challenge I'm I'm just weird like that I'm like all right oh, let's fucking go let's see yeah maybe this is gonna be too poppy or too weird who knows mm-hmm. but I I enjoyed it it was fun what's the uh, what's the largest audience that you performed in front of uh. The largest audience that I performed in front of with my music, singing and like performing as myself was probably this past show at the Glass House. Um, it's like 900 people, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I remember looking up the capacity there and I think it was like 912 or something. It was a really odd number. It was around there. Yeah. And so like, that, who, that, who did they did they pay for the for the extra twelve? Did they say, hey, let's just do, come on, I, I, throw us, dude, or it was nine tens? Like throw us two more. Yeah. Dude, the city's cr- we we had to do shit like that here, mm-hmm. where they had to tell us each room and how many people could fit in each room legally. It's a whole thing, but yeah, that, they'll bring it to the exact number. It's crazy. Um, so they had, and but then playing just playing in a band probably, I played with my dad's band. Recently, recently in in Arizona or uh, uh, they actually they played the Greek theater and shit my apologies and, the Greek uh, theater of Arizona okay I got yeah, it. yeah. <laughs> and that was probably the biggest show I've ever played just playing in a band like in front of people um yeah and you weren't on drums you were on guitar correct yeah I was playing guitar your father did not want you playing the drums no he said no that way. was his that's his that's his legacy that's his domain <laughs> that's his thing yeah <laughs> Um, going back to that Harvard and Stone residency, that was every week for a month, right? Yeah, it was in uh, February. Wow, I and that was, was February shit. Was that with Active Decay? No, that was just my own thing. I was just a way to promote the Ricky's first dance album. And that's streaming now, right? Yeah, and people, can, yeah, yeah, yeah. people can get it at allipoprecords yeah, dot com. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was every Tuesday. Wow. How do you how do you feel playing it on a weekday as opposed to a weekend? Does that does that change anything for you? Yeah, I mean it's typically not as energetic. It's not as many people come on a weekday, but regardless, it's fun either way. You know, the I think the residency went well. There was that the first week or no, sorry, the second week was when all that crazy rain started, mm-hmm. and uh, that was kind of a weird night because it was just pouring rain. I mean, he's, no one's gonna go to a show, especially out here when it's pouring. So it was it was a weird kind of night, empty, dark, cold, wet night. But the rest of it, it was it was fun, super fun. Do you do you prefer it to be cold inside than like warmer? I don't know. Uh, sometimes breaking a sweat, I feel like I, I play better. But then sometimes it's nice, kind of layering up, putting right. on a bunch of jackets and fucking beanies and. Yeah, I mean, because everybody owns seeing, jackets. Seeing the steam come out of your mouth, that's yeah. a vibe too, you know. You're in active decay right now, right? Yeah, it's basically just me and my friend Brooke. It's it's like our project. Mm-hmm. Now, d- were you, was that the intent for you to be in that band as well? 
or did it just uh, sort of happen? really it, it was more uh, an intent to and i really like brooke's voice she came in work you know saying backups on a session that i was working with working on and uh we started talking and we were kind of into really similar types of music i got really into like obscure 80s pop stuff in the last two years like pesh mode stuff like that yeah <laughs> i mean yeah obscure stuff basically yeah, yeah that yeah. and and others <laughs> but uh and she was you know way into that shit too and if anything she was schooling me on stuff that i'd never heard of and i was like oh man this is cool and so we just started sending songs back and forth and i was sending her ideas and eventually we just right, let's just make music together not with the intention on me being a part of it but um i think it just worked out that way she's kind of the front woman and i'm like the the dude in the back on the synth you know sure that's that's where you want to be you want to be the dude in the back <laughs> yeah always down for that always down to be the dude in the back yeah uh how, how often are you going in and uh uh, maybe not live, but in a recording session, like laying down a bass, drums, guitar, that, that that sort of thing for bands that are associated with the label. Every day. Yeah, every day. So, yeah, it's pretty crazy. It's pretty crazy. It's it's very in, in creatively incestual around here. People are playing on each other's albums and singing on each other's stuff and r- even writing stuff that, you know, someone's having a hard time with. It's very much... And I, I love it that way. I prefer it that way. Than because everyone. everybody's coming from a different background. Yeah, everyone's coming from a different it. background. And there's certain people that have really great strengths in certain departments of, you know, whether it's vocal harmonies or slide guitar or saxophone or whatever. And there's some people that need that shit on their record. And they're like, uh, I really want a sax. Do you know any great sax players? I'm like... Right here. He's literally right next door. He's in the bathroom. He's like, yeah, yeah, he's taking a piss right now. He's going to be right back. <laughs> and uh, it happens every, literally almost every day. Um, and so, and sometimes that's, you know, someone needs drums. I'll play drums on a record. Or someone needs bass. Um, I can't really offer much more than drums and bass and maybe like some harmonies, some singing. Other than that. Guitar, I'm, oboe, I'm tuba, a, <laughs> yeah, recorder. Exactly. A tuba. That'd be pretty funny has has your your um has your involvement with all these different kind of bands who are that are asking you to to be to play a part in their songs has that informed your own music um yeah definitely it's definitely uh all of those experiences are invaluable i mean you just learn so much by working with someone closely and then you, people, when they entrust you to play on their song, it's kind of, it's a very personal thing. You know, it's it's part of their soul and their perspective on life. And, and so it's it's interesting kind of sticking your head into someone else's song and idea and kind of swimming around it, navigating it. Def- definitely uh, uh, inspiring, sometimes not inspiring, sometimes inspiring, sometimes it's learning lessons, sometimes it's one that I'm like, I'd never want to make a song like that ever again. You know, it's just, it's, it's invaluable. Right. I like that answer. That's a good answer. Why? Yeah. I mean, that's, just, uh, no, I, uh, I, 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 I had to give it up to you, man. That was a good one. <laughs> Thanks man. How many, how many records have, have you put out under your name now? Um, five, I think six six records do you ever look back on some records like oh i wish i did it that way or i wish i did it this way oh fuck yeah yeah how do you how do you how do you get past that i just go to that classic mantra quote that art is never finished you know i just remind myself that at that particular time when i made that particular song i felt like it was complete enough and i just gotta live with that shit it's also like the world we live in too though it's so digital and um, there's there's no physical imprints of most of my albums. Only two of my albums have actually been, or three of them have been actually printed physically. So I can just delete them whenever I want. And I can also re-record them whenever I want. So there's a freeing element to it where it's like, uh, I could re-record that song and just 
put it out again if I wanted to. A Remas- lot of it, remastered version. A lot, yeah. A lot of it's just letting it go too. You know, it's just art's never finished, and that's what I was doing in 2014. You know, so back at the desk too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> just living with that shit. I'm sure you'd probably think the same with like some podcasts where Fuck like, yeah, yes. What was I doing back? You know, yeah, it's the same thing. Yeah, no, I, I get what you're coming yeah. from on that. Yeah. Or even the art that I do, I'm like, ah, fuck, I wish I, yeah. Yeah, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. You just gotta, like, accept it and keep trucking. Right. Allman Brothers. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, how how different is it uh, being um, on the side of the studio that's, that you're recording something and kind of going back behind the other side of the glass? What do you, what would he prefer to, to do? Record or be recorded? Mm-hmm. That always is changing for me. I would say probably I, I probably like record I like recording other people and producing and mixing other people's music probably more than my own at this stage of my life. But if you would ask me that five years ago, I would have said the reverse, you know. Um, but I just I don't know. I get a lot of joy with um, working with people and their their stuff whether it's recording or mixing or producing or playing. There's something, I don't know, it's fun. Being the synth guy in the back. Whatever exactly. it's got to be. Exactly. No, Man I of many yeah, There's something, I don't know, yeah, there's something uh, less daunting about it. I feel like I'm more creative. Some, something about having that pressure of, this is my song, this comes from my brain. Th- there's a, a little bit of a stiffness that comes with that, which which I enjoy, but lately I've just been liking working with other people. I also like that answer, Wyatt. <laughs> um, Wyatt, man, thank you so much for coming back on. I really, Dude, really appreciate it. Um, Anytime, man. It's always a pleasure. I'll be back next week then. Yeah, come on by. Um, <laughs> but uh, you, know, you know how we do it here. Um, got, so we've got to wrap it up with some promotional stuff. So, <laughs> okay. Lollipop Records... <laughs> com, right? That's where yeah. people can go. That's yeah, you can basically navigate everything just doing it that way. Awesome. The old school 90s way. LimeWire. Lime um, yeah. <laughs> Lollipop Records on Instagram, correct? Yeah, Lollipop on Instagram. And that's two L's, not three L's. <laughs> One L. One L. Well, I mean two L's. Uh, L- yeah, 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 that's, yeah. That's, that's exactly. Awesome. Yeah, you're right. Just right. Simple. You're right. Yeah. That's uh, the one, like so many times I'm like, L O L I P O P, and I'm like, but that's not how you spell it. I'm like, I know it's on purpose. But that, but that sounds good though. Like L O L P I. Thanks. Yeah, the whole point yeah. is supposed to be like L O L. The, this you know, laugh out loud. Yeah. You know, whatever. It was dumb. No, I like it. <laughs> and it's and it, it's it's going on now. Lollipop Records. dot com. Lollipop yeah. Records at Lollipop Records on Instagram to keep yeah. up to date with all the releases and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. You, you got anything like com- coming out uh, or artists? That people need, yeah, need to keep their eye on time. I mean, there's this great artist named Clippy that that we're putting a bunch of music out with, Beach Bums, who I mentioned earlier. Um, there's an artist that's coming in today that I'm working with called Hider Days that doesn't have any music out yet. Um, that's really cool. It's constant. I mean, the list goes on. The list goes on, and you can keep up to date with all that. Uh, Live Pop Records on Instagram, and is there another place that you guys? Or that people keep up to date, or is that those that's, are the I two would say best that's places? Probably the two best places: our website and our Instagram. Mm-hmm. We're on TikTok, but we are not at, super active on TikTok. Um, yeah. And what's what's the what's the TikTok at? It's just Lollipop Records. Lollipop Records. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. Uh, and I mean your your own social media, Wyatt Blair, Wyatt underscore Blair. Yeah, Wyatt underscore Blair underscore. This will all be linked below. So. Yeah. <laughs> If that is what it is, it'll be there, and if not, yeah, it should be. It'll be. I, <laughs> I should know that. But. It'll 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 be switched either way. Um, Sick. Yeah. And do we have anything else, Wyatt? No, not that I can think of. All right. Well, Wyatt, Same you're the man. Shit. Thank you so much, dude. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you. Any anytime, seriously. Right. Next week. Down.